The current number one challenger to champion Don Prudhomme is young Billy Meyer. In a professional career that began when he was barely 16, Billy won the coveted Funny Car Manufacturer's title at Orange County International Raceway and had, by the time he was 20, set a new NHRA low elapsed time record for funny cars. It's a slogan that my father wrote quite a few years ago, uh, which I live by and I have it on my wall at home, and it's uh, whatever you vividly imagine. Ardently desire, sincerely believe, and then enthusiastically act upon must inevitably come to pass. And I think that's quite true. I mean, if you really believe in something and if you really try hard enough, it won't, it's going to be yours when they think. Uh, Billy's probably one of the hardest chargers I've ever met in my life. He's got more going for him than any racer I've ever met. Uh, he's got dedication. He's got drive. Nothing has stopped him. He suffered two crashes last year. He was racing within weeks. I mean, it's a good thing he wasn't a prize fighter because he would keep getting up after he was out. He is going to be one of drag racing's ultra superstars plus he's darn good looking and i don't know how they keep the girls away from him i guess when he was about five years old i brought home a fire engine thing with a battery in it and he quickly wanted something that would go faster and we got one of the initial stock go-karts and began to set some records then he came to me one time when he was about 16 and he wanted to get full blown the dragster i'd put on one of these fire suits i'd never put on before it took me a few seconds to pull up and make my attempt, and it was a blistering 10-feet uh, attempt. I shut it off and they opened the body, and I jumped out. And, I mean, that was, about, that was enough. <laughs> Look at you. You had long hair. And, well, how old were you then? 16. 16. Everyone has to start in drag racing someplace. Billy Meyer in Colleen, Texas in 1971. But I wonder where a woman starts in a sport like drag racing. The fellas would protest any time we came to the racetrack. That we had to be cheating. We ran so good, we had to be cheating. And it's just that we knew all the little tricks of the trade. I knew I had the qualities. I knew I had the ability. All I wanted was the chance to prove I could do it. And I used to do that every Wednesday night. And when it got to the point in my three-room apartment, there were probably 150 trophies everywhere, in the bathroom, in the living room, underneath the bed, in my bedroom. And I wound up selling 170-some-odd trophies back to the racetrack for $2 a piece. And then I went out and bought a brand new 456 gear rear end for the car. Shirley Muldowney, the first woman ever to be licensed to drive a top fuel dragster. Don't tell my secrets, Waterman. Shirley, in winning the top fuel world championship, wheeled her car into the winner's circle, defeating the best male drivers in the sport. My sister was really a pretty girl. And I was kind of like a rogue, you know, and I was the little scrawny one, and she didn't want me around. My dad was always very special because I was always his little girl. I was the one that was supposed to be his little boy, and I turned out to be his tomboy. So he was really hard on me, but I knew I could always go to him when I really had a problem. And he, he was determined I was going to be a musician, and I played an accordion for four or five years, and I knew that was not my bag. I went on to something else. I had to make a move because I was notorious as far as racing on the streets and there used to be a trooper, New York State trooper named Trooper Coyne and he was notorious. In fact, you could hear him coming and I know he was cranking, cranking the car over 90 miles an hour. You'd hear him coming a couple miles away at night and he would collect a stack of driver's licenses about that high and, and he'd walk over to the car and he'd say, Shirley, how did you get this car here? We towed it, you know. Uh, have you been running it? No. And, of course, he would burn his hand on the hood of the car. And uh, he gave me a warning then that they would see if they could put me in the armed forces, enlist me if I didn't stop. And that is when I decided to actually go to the drag strip and, 
and kind of get rid of, they call them frustrations, and it wasn't that at all. It was the competition, it was the cars, and it was the fellas just flat beating the boys, and that was a ton of fun for me. In the last few years, drag racing has settled to its own place in the world of great racing events. But you know, it had its own beginnings on the streets. The 50s. Drag racers were the outlaws in those days. They built their cars in garages and alleys, sometimes using stolen parts and most of the time with borrowed tools. to the street. They could get their kicks anywhere. Anywhere that is, they could find a stretch of open, clear road. we have to admit that the drag racer was generally considered a public nuisance. He was somebody that people related to uh, uh, squealing his tires in front of their house in the middle of the night or uh, uh, doing various other reckless things. Wally Parks, the president and founder of the National Hot Rod Association. It was his visions in 1951 that created championship drag racing and his efforts have brought the sport to the level of acceptance it has today. 